Well, it's got to be one of your worst nightmares, doesn't it? You're in your home, trying to sleep, and suddenly you hear the unmistakable sounds of a gas fire explosion right outside your front door. There were six people inside Dennis and Bev Bradshaw's Port Macquarie home when a gas fire ignited in November, and police have confirmed the blaze was started deliberately when a gas barbecue bottle was purposely set alight. Bev, tell us about that Sunday night, because it started off quite quietly for your family, didn't it? Yes, it was all nice and quiet. I went out because my niece was getting married on the 20th of November and we had a hen's night out and I came home about one o'clock in a taxi and I had a look around, everything was quiet, nothing out of the ordinary and um, Mm. went inside, had a cup of tea and... um, I'm sure what happened, they were watching because as soon as all the lights went out, that's when they, about 10 minutes after that, that's when they came onto the veranda, I believe. Wow, yeah, I mean, that's a pretty big giveaway, isn't it? Basically, when the household settled down to sleep, Mm. lights went off, all of a sudden, tell us what happened. What did you, how did you know there was a problem? What were your first warning signs? Well, it was the dog was barking, but she does that if somebody just happens to be walking by. So I thought, I said, "Oh, come on, Mitzi, we'll just we'll go to bed," and um, got into bed. And then it was the noise, just like a jet, a plane taking off. And I was just so baffled; I just didn't know what what it was at all. Wow! I just thought, "What the heck?" And my grandson come running out of the the room he stayed the night he'd come running out of his room and he said what the heck's going on and then Dennis opened the door the front um, door yeah the front door and the fire is all fire had already been lit Mm. so what what did you see Dennis do you mind telling us when you opened that front door what 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 did you see out there just a mass of flame wow just a wall of flame that's all you saw. So you certainly couldn't have gone out there. It was no, certainly, I just the veranda a, was a light. A few buckets of water and threw out there, and then they were telling me to get out. So I went around the side because if you can keep the gas bottle cool, it can't explode. Uh, and so I got the hose over the side of the veranda on the outside, just hosing there. Wow, OK, so you were but trying the, to cool it down. The fireman did tell me if it had gone off, the, all the people, because the neighbours came out, everybody within 30 metres would have been killed. What did what happened, Bev? I mean, obviously you went into emergency mode. The, the house needed to be evacuated. There were six yes. people inside. Yes. Um, An 11-year-old girl too, your yes, granddaughter. Yes, she was there too. And we, we got out through the, the back door, the laundry door. Thankfully, we did have that laundry door, you know, back door to go to. If you haven't got a back door, you haven't... No. I don't know how a lot of people get out of their homes. But anyway, and we went and hopped over the fence, and my neighbour, Jenny, she was just wonderful. She she dialed triple A even before we even got over her. She said, come in here, you come into my place and stay here. And we just stayed there the rest of the night. So it's, all of you managed to escape unhurt? Yes. And I was worried about the little dog. I said, oh, our dog's still in there. And I knew I couldn't go back in. And I thought, oh, I've got to face the fact that she may not come out alive. And then about 20 minutes later, I want to thank the firemen so much for... they, They brought her out. The little dog, so Mitzi, her name is. And so they managed to get in and save Mitzi. Yes, oh, she was that in, amazing? apparently they found her in the bedroom. Yeah. Oh, poor thing, she would have been terrified too. Yes. But yes. what a miracle. I, I, I have to stress this. I mean, it was quite a disaster, but nobody was hurt. You managed to get everybody out. You had the support of your neighbours. Somebody had called the fire brigade, and they sound like they responded quite quickly too. They did. Yeah. Yes. How much damage was caused by this, uh, by this fire? Oh, the front, all the front veranda, and it came, it, the roof, it went up into the roof, and of course there was damage on the, it was just such a mess, such a mess. And um, the furniture, there was some um, cocktail cabinet was just ruined by the fire because it was right at the front as you walk in the door. I Did you lose it. possessions? Yes, I had a... I had a couple of lovely pictures that I had given to me. Of course, they were just wrecked. Mm. And, um, yeah, a few other things. Cur- yeah. Curtains. Oh, yeah, the house things, mm. yes. Yeah. 
Tell, tell me about the neighbourhood, because you, you've lived there for quite a while, I understand. Is, it a, is, is there trouble in this neighbourhood? Is this something you would expect to happen, a fire being deliberately lit on your front veranda? No, not at all. Um, see, we've been there 10 years, and I've had that barbecue there for 10 years where we kept it, and I even had a, I'm not long bought a new cover, always had it covered really well. So I just want to know why, why... You know, for someone to do that. Dennis, do you have any idea why? I mean, the the most most people listening to this would be thinking, were, did you have any enemies? Did you have somebody who said they were going to do this, who'd threatened you beforehand? No, no there's nothing like that. No? No. This was just a, a bit of a random, opportunistic crime? Well, I suppose you could say that, because there were uh, parties going on, one up the street and one around the corner. Right. And if it was just... What can you say, idiots? Yep. Uh, wanting to do something to hurt somebody, but we've we've not had any trouble there. We get on well with the neighbours up our end. Sure. Uh, we all look after one another. But it was interesting too, isn't it, Beth? Because this required some technique, apparently, to start this fire. It wasn't just a a, a very young child with a match. It actually took a bit of uh, technique to do a few things with the gas bottle before they could yes, do what they yes, did. Yes, that's right. Yes, they knew what they were doing. Mm. Are the police uh, making progress in their investigation? Are they staying in touch with you and letting you both know how investigations are going? I was hoping they would keep in touch. Um, I only had, from the detective that's handling the case, um, I've only had a couple of calls from her and nothing for... Oh, look, it's been weeks. Mm. And we can be very open about this. Apparently, within your neighbourhood, it's commonly... There are a few people who are suspected very strongly. People know who did this, so... How, how does that feel to live in a neighbourhood, a little community really like that, where this event has happened to you and the neighbourhood know who the culprits are, yet they're still free at the moment and haven't been charged? That must be very frustrating, I'd imagine. It is very frustrating. It makes uh, I feel angry and confused. Have you ever been tempted to confront the family that is meant to be responsible for this? I'd like to, just to talk to them and, you know... Put that yes. question, why? I did talk to one boy mm-hmm. who I believe, well, he admitted he was there. Right. But he didn't actually do it. And I said, well, you've got to go and tell the police what you know. But he won't. OK. He won't. Um, what do both of you think should happen to a person, whether they're over 18, under 18, regardless, somebody who commits a crime like this, which could have cost scores of lives, let's mm. face it, what should happen to them? What should, the, what should the system do to people who commit a crime like this? <laughs> uh, the system, I don't know. You can't really trust the system half the time with half the uh, magistrates. But we were told that they should have been up on attempted murder. Wow. For that, but whether it eventuates, we don't know. Mm. And it's the Department of Housing House. Yes. You have have you put a request into the Department of Housing to to relocate? Oh, I have. Yeah. I have. Oh, I did as I actually it was the next day. I said I can't. I can't live here anymore. Mm. I'd like to to put in for a transfer, which I've done. You and I was so shaken up. I mean, I went to my doctor and she couldn't even believe that it had happened to us. Mm. She said, you've been a good citizen in this town for over 30 years and she couldn't believe that it happened to us. Mm. I said, well, I'd, I wouldn't wish it on anybody. I wouldn't want it any... I hope it just never happens to anybody else, you know. It's not fair, is it, Bev? Yeah, no, no, not when you've got children. No, you've lived there quietly, like you say, yeah. done the right thing and then something like this happens. And mm. I can't think of many circumstances where the Department of Housing... Um, could find a more extreme example where they should step in and relocate you. I think mm. that's the only fair mm. thing that can happen here. Yes, yes. And I hope that does happen. If that becomes an issue for you, let us know and we'll try and follow it up for you too with the Department of Housing ourselves. Okay. And what a miracle nobody was hurt, hey? Yes. Absolutely. Mm. Thank you so much for coming in. You're listening to It's Time to Talk. Give us a call on 6585 if you'd like to make a comment.